You know, there was this movie called The Blob. And it was, how many people saw it? The Blob, good. Fine culture, good. Uh, I'm glad that the level of culture is very high here. But there's this little ball that comes from outer space and a guy's working a farm in it and it kind of, it has like, you know, it has like, it's like a, it's like a blob. And it, and it gets on his hands and then he becomes part of the blob. And then the blob starts getting bigger and starts moving and it starts being a moving blob and a guy's working on his car and it goes under the car and he becomes part of the blob and then it goes in a movie theater and it's becoming this one big blob. That's what Eastern faith is. It's merging into a big cosmic blob. <laughs> now, you see, the thing is that, you know, it's not that the self is wrong. The self is not a bad thing. It's sin that's a bad thing. It's selfishness that's a bad thing. The self is not bad. We are not trying to get rid of the self. We're trying to get rid of the old self. And we're not trying, by God's love, get rid of the old, crucify the old self that we might have a new self that's created in His image. It's not the self. We're not trying to extinguish existence. We're trying to take out self. We're, by God, to die to that self-centeredness, die to that self, me as God. You know, the, see, the thing is, yep, we have the choice. We're either going to try to be God, try to be the center of everything, or know God, love God, know His love. You can't have both. If you are the center of the universe, you cannot know the center of the universe. If you are the center of everything, you're always right, you're always right, then you can never know who truly is right. The righteousness of God. You see, we're not even supposed to be the center of our own lives. You know, because to be the center of our own lives is really in a subtle way saying we're the center of the universe. But we are not, and that's a good thing. Because love and joy are waiting to happen to us as we get beyond ourselves. As long as we're sitting here judging other people, we are saying we are the center. We can judge. No. There is a God, and you are not Him. I am not Him. That's why it's written, be still and know that I am God. And only when you know that really He is God and really know what that means, we can be still. If we're not still inside, then we have a problem knowing that. Because you were made, I was made, we were all made to know Him and glorify Him and love Him and be completed by Him and be free in Him. You know, we have a self so that we can know His love. But it, He needs to be filled with His love, emptied with the, of the junk. See, the great problem of the Eastern faith is that ultimately you're all alone. It's very cold. It's very lonely. It's very dark. But the Word of God says God is love. And He loves you. There is another. And that's why you came into existence. Not because you're part of an illusion or you're part of Him being deluded. But you came because He called you into existence. Because there's someone who loves you. And who gave His life for you. That's how much love is there. That we might know it, receive it, and be filled and set free, and be forgiven and washed. There is a miracle. Because, you know, and that's something you can never say in, the, in, this, in this teaching. But there is a miracle. There's a grace. There's an amazing grace. There's a new thing. There's another thing. There's a new reality. There's someone who is better than us and bigger than us and taller than us and more beautiful than us and so he can make us blessed and saved and beautiful. Are you glad that you're not God? I'm glad I'm not God. Turn to your neighbor. Say, say thank God I'm not God. And answer them. Say, believe me, I do. <laughs> Thank God I'm not God. I'm glad I'm not. It's a freedom not to be God. There's not enough room to be, you know, it's a freedom to get off the throne of the self and to get out of the center and, you know, maybe the other person is right. You know, maybe that's when we say, I forgive, you know, you know forgive me. There is a dying to self. There's a letting go of the, getting off the throne and God can bless you. That's why it feels so beautiful after you do that. That's why, that's why there's a release. It's, you got the choice. No God, you either try to be God or no God. You want to know God, then you just, then you just got to get off that total, that self thing. 
Because better than all that, you know, God is better than the world. He's better than, it's better than trying to be God is to, Lord, that I might know thee. I might know you, thou, you. The miracle of his love. See, better than tell someone telling me that God is us, or God is that God is with us. Because if God was us, were us, then this is it. But if God is with us, we got hope. What can be against us? Better than God is in all things is that God is with you in all things. He said, I am with you. You see, he didn't say, I am you, then you couldn't have him with you. I am with you. Therefore, when you pass through the waters, it will not overflow you. When you pass through the fire, it will not burn you. I am with you. I am with you. Therefore, we can say something that you cannot be said in all the New Age things with any kind of sincerity, even if they say it, it's just aping something because it doesn't make any sense. But to us, we can say it, it's the foundation. We can say three words they can't say, which is, God loves me. Now, God loves them too, but they don't, can't know it through that. God loves me. I can, therefore, I can call him my friend, my rock, my father, my redeemer, my shepherd, my best friend, my beloved, my salvation, my Yeshua, my Lord and my God. I can call him. He's my best friend. And you never have to achieve that. And therefore, you never have to take yoga. He said, my yoke, my joining is easy. My burden is light. Come to me all you who are tired and burdened down, and I'll give you rest. Just stop trying to be God. The position's filled. <laughs> let go. Let God step out. You know, this week, let's try to take a step out of the bounds of self-centeredness, to take a step out of what your ego would do, out of it to do with joy. See, don't do it. If you do it begrudgingly, it's not going to be good. But if you do something with joy, humble yourself with joy. Then you're free. There's a freedom in God. You know, a, you know, ask forgiveness with joy. You know, forgive with joy. That you might know God. Because those who can step out of self, out of that old thing, they're the ones who see Him face to face. Receive and be filled. Praise God you're not God. Praise God we're not God. And therefore you don't have to worry about the universe. You're not running it. You can go to bed because he's staying up. <laughs> he never sleeps or slumbers who watches Israel and watches over you. He cares for you. And it's not someone you have to try to reach up and jump up to. He's reached down. His, it's grace. It's him. It's not us. It's him. His arms are open. The greatest thing we could ever do is to know him. Know his love. Know his peace. Know his strength. Know his, his presence and know his joy. It begins when you say, you are my God and I will worship you. And it never ends. There's no end to him. There's no end to his love. Even in forever, there's no end to it. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His loving kindness is everlasting.